how do you see those changes there at the uh, the ballroom now? It's the um, Newcastle Hotel. Look, it's sort of lo- is it losing that LGBT sort of look, I, link? I, I, What's the... I, it's sad to say that there was, a, as you say, there was sort of a period there where it was a, a happening venue. Uh, with... Look, 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 man, look. Um, the people that created the small ballroom are some of the coolest people that I've worked with. Mm-hmm. Um, the folks at Kingdom Sounds are really, really good friends of mine. And I have watched that mob put their heart and soul through political bullshit <laughs> because they just want a space that is profitable and yeah. really, really good. And they've got them all over this, the state, right? Mm-hmm. So there was a management regime in that, in that place that did some really unsavory things. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people took a big fucking hit. And yeah. it, did, it did derail us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not afraid to say these things. Yeah. Um, it did take a bit of the steam out. But after that, they've never given up. Yeah, yeah. And so it had to be saved. You know, you had to get rid of the disease. Yeah, yeah. And it's gone through a healing. Mm-hmm. And now they have new owners. And I wish them the absolute best with what's an iconic place. Mm -hmm. They've made a decision to change the direction in the front, and for reasons that I won't get into that I do understand, um, I understand their decision to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really, really do hope that they do well with it, because I've I've driven by on weekends, coming home from other gigs, and I've seen the nightclub lineup. Now, it might not be as much band-heavy as it was, but... Look, if this is how they're finding to make it work at the moment, and then keep it as a viable because I because I do think it's lost out to some other venues because of some of the things that happened, mm-hmm. and so it will take a while, just like it took eighteen months for when I was there when we I just happened to kind of walk in as yep. we were rolling it up, and we really got it going. Where it was a smashing place, it man. Was, yeah, yeah. It, it, really it was the talk. It was the talk of the town. Mm. And it's funny, I work at Lazat's now, but I told Brian when I first started working over there, I said, man, I used to consider my place the alternative Lazat's mm-hmm. because we were afraid to have anything, yeah. right, within our purvey. Mm-hmm. We were just allowed to have louder stuff, yeah. right? We, we would do the punk stuff. Mm-hmm. We would do that, but it was really trying to have this small, intimate place, and re- we had, PA was good, yeah, you it's know, a great venue to play. All that. And, you know, punk shows where they're spitting on you. Yeah. That reminded me of CBGB's <laughs> in New York City, right? I yeah. saw the I, <laughs> I saw the Ramones at CBGB's <laughs> um, as a kid. And so, like, that visceral thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, Smith Street Band, one of my favorite moments. Their guy's mixing out front. And I go up around the side of the one speaker cabinet to just kind of play a bit of security. Mm-hmm. And the monitors are all pushed a meter upstage, the guys are like backed right up against the steps. Yeah. The lead singer's having to kind of like stand on the drum riser and lead forward on his, <laughs> on his thing. And it's just raging. I wouldn't have changed a bit of it for yeah, a minute, yeah. man. There's 300 people in my venue just absolutely going off, having the best time, being respectful. But it was just like it was this huge push. 